muscle during this time, during this eight weeks, that's what sets up the yo-yo, where you lose 10, 20, 30 pounds, and then if you go back to how you're eating before, your body rebounds to your previous weight plus some extra, because your metabolism is now a lot slower because you've lost the muscle, and that's where, that's the core of your, of your metabolism, is your muscle. So that is, that is precious. You do not want to lose that. So we're going to go over all the details, how to shred the fat the fastest without losing the muscle. And if you're a gainer, then we'll give some tips on how to add muscle without adding fat. Uh, by the end of this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're just going to dive in. So everybody has their in-body scan or a copy of it. I know a lot of people will turn it in up at the front desk, so if you don't have it, just follow along. This is going to be on YouTube. Also, it's Facebook Live right now, but it's also going to be on YouTube, so if you want to check it out later, you can and go over the notes. So grab your in-body scan, and we'll go over some of those stats. So the most important things on your in-body scan is going to be, obviously, your weight, right? We're trying to drop that, and then your body composition. So body composition is gonna be your percent of body fat, percent of lean mass, right? And so if you lose muscle, you can lose 20 pounds and your body fat composition can be exactly the same, which is not what we're striving for because then you've lost muscle, lost body fat, it's equal, then your metabolism is slower. So you wanna drop the weight and lose the body fat percentage. 4% is fantastic. If you guys hit 4% during this eight weeks, Applaud yourself, that's great. That's a really good realistic number. If it's 2%, that's good. If you lose 20, 30 pounds, it's only a 2% difference, that means you've lost some muscle. So just know that. We're gonna do an uh, in-body test halfway through this. So at the four week mark, we're gonna go back into the supplement companies, retest, just to make sure that what you're doing is working. So body fat composition is really important. Some people will hit six to 8%. Occasionally you'll see some extreme crazy number, uh, but it's not very hard, it's not very, diff it's not very easy to accomplish that. Um, so on your body sheet, you have your total body water. Um, a lot of people see this and they think, okay, total body water, it's low, or it says I'm low, I need to drink more water. That's not what it's all about. Total body water is very relative to the amount of muscle you have on your body. So body fat, there's no water in it. Occasionally people talk about like, yeah, they connect the water to the fat, there's no water in it. You got some hydrogen and stuff, which is, yeah, we won't go into that, but. So muscle has a ton of water. So if you see a low uh, total body water, that means you need more muscle to increase that. And that's where the, the water floods those muscles. So lean body mass, this is your muscle, your bones, your organs, the water, all of that, everything but the body fat. And we use this number to gauge how much protein you need. For, so this is where we can really benefit from these specific numbers instead of just your body weight. When you look at like how much protein do I need? How many carbohydrates do I need? How much fat grams do I need? So this allows you to get really specific. A lot of people just go off of body weight, 
and look at an equation and say, okay, because of your body weight, you're 200 pounds. So I got 10 people that are 200 pounds, right? One person is 5% body fat, so they have 175, 180 pounds of muscle, or not muscle, but lean mass. And then I have a person where it's like 30, 40% body fat, where it's gonna be much lower lean mass. So that totally affects your metabolism. <coughs> Completely affects how many calories you burn in a day and how much protein you need to intake just to maintain that muscle. So now we're gonna get really specific with that. And then obviously your weight. And then I'll, I'll pass this on. Yeah. So um, muscle fat analysis here, we're looking at, so it's gonna show your weight, and you're gonna see there's an arrow down, kind of a midline, and then an arrow up. So if you're teetering on this side, it's saying, all right, for your height, weight, age, you're, um, you know, we need to be down more in this mid range here, okay? So, um, so looking at your weight here, this is gonna be your skeletal muscle mass, all right? And so, just pure muscle mass there. And then, right here, um, body fat mass. So how many pounds of fat you have in your body. So that's the muscle fat analysis. So again, kind of like, okay, well, where should I be? How far up am I? Kind of looking at, you know, these arrows here and where you're lining up and trying to get more to that midline. You'll also notice here, it's gonna make a shape of a C, an I, or a D, all right? So if we connect these together, that makes a C, all right? So for this person, we'd want to say, all right, well, ideally, D is great, but let's take it one step at a time. Let's try to get you more towards the I, okay? So if his weight shimmies back a little bit, he maintains all his muscle mass, or maybe he gains a little bit, you know, so if you're real deconditioned, you haven't exercised in a long time, even if you are a little bit older, you will gain some muscle mass, all right? So you have that great window here. Um, lift your weight, get your protein in, and um, you will gain some muscle mass. So his weight shimmies down, his muscle mass increases, and his body fat decreases, and you'll find he's gonna get more to that eye position, okay? The gainers, they're probably gonna be more at a D, okay? So, or, right? Yeah, a D. So their skeletal muscle mass is out here, you know, so they're gonna be more of that D. Does that make sense? So you can kind of look if you're a C, an I, or a D, um, and where you need to go. So obesity analysis here. So BMI is your uh, body mass index. That number to me is pointless, right? That's for insurance companies. So like I'm overweight, right? When I go to the insurance company, I gotta pay extra because I'm overweight, right? I could be like really low body fat percentage, but they don't care. They it's just the it. height to weight ratio, so. Height to weight ratio. So what matters more is the body fat percentage when you're looking at overall health and well-being. So, uh, and this is PBF, percent body fat. So that's that part of it. And then uh, going down here, this is really critical um, on a training part when you go out into the gym, because this is gonna show the segmental lean analysis shows an imbalance, right? So I got my right arm, my left arm, the total, uh, right leg, left leg, um, not total, torso. Yeah. Torso. <laughs> trunk. Uh, the trunk. Thank the you. trunk. Thank you. So if my, if my right arm is, let's say, 119 lean, and my left arm is 121, there's an imbalance there. So usually the dominant side has more lean mass, and that exposes that, so you're like, okay, I need to do a few more repetitions, maybe another set on that weak side, so it shows you kind of a roadmap. And then all the trainers, this is their specialty. They do a lot of corrective exercise work. They do all these movement analyses, and then they can see, like, oh yeah, this shoulder's forward, that's why it's not functioning as well. So they use this and a movement analysis to determine how you need to correct that. Whether it's um, don't do this exercise, do this exercise. So that's a big plug for personal training during this contest. So you're training your body to be more injury preventative or prevent more injuries. 
and possibly fix some of them in the process too. So I always tell people like, hey, just once a week, hook up with a trainer, it could be a half hour, hour, you get the accountability, working the muscles harder. At the end of this, this percent body fat <coughs> is always better. You're in the four to six percent than the two to four percent. I've just seen it over years and years and years, the people that just do that little extra focus. And then back to- So real quick on yeah, this too, just, um, so to get into that mid range, everything should be at at least a hundred. So a lot of times you think, oh, my legs are so much stronger than my arms. But like this person, they're at a 93 and a 92 in their legs. Their arms are at a 121.9. And so this is showing me, okay, if you're gonna gain muscle, you're gonna gain it in your legs. So let's focus on your legs here, because that's where you're gonna gain your muscle, because we need to get you closer to that 100%. And then that's gonna help that skeletal muscle number go up. That's gonna help your body fat go down. All right, so just seeing kind of where you land there and maybe where you can focus your training to get the biggest bang for your buck. All right, and then we go into how many calories do we need this to intake? So that's where you start with. So I can do you know, tons of protein, tons of fat, all these different macros and percentages. I can go keto, I can go all carbohydrates, whatever, but if I'm going like no carb and I'm eating 3,000 calories a day and I'm only burning 2,000 calories a day, I'm still gonna add body fat, I'm gonna see results. So macros are important, but I'd say the umbrella, the big thing, is more calories in, calories out. So how do you determine how many calories you should be intaking? You gotta first figure out how many calories you burn in a day. So over here, you have your basal metabolic rate, your BMR. So again, this is determined off of how much lean mass you have. You do your body fat composition, if you have more muscle, this number goes up. That's the base of your metab metabolism. So this is how many calories you burn at rest. Like if you sleep in bed all day, 24 hours, that's what you're gonna burn, just your body supporting all the muscle and activity. So with that, if you're trying to find your deficit and things like that, I would say don't ever go below your basal metabolic rate, okay? So um, that's kind of a good goal. A lot of times people, you know, their basal metabolic rate's 13, 1400 calories for a woman, but they're stuck on this 1200 number or 1100. It's like, no, 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 don't dip too low because that's when you're gonna lose your muscle. And yeah, you'll lose weight, but you're gonna lose muscle. And then like, Brian, I think that's where that yo-yo comes into effect. Like, you're not as motivated maybe, you're eating a little bit more, and then you're gonna gain weight, but it's, you've lost your muscle. So it's, that's where that yo-yo, the up and down, comes back as fast. So never going below your basal metabolic rate, all right? And then, um, because we are active, we're not laying in bed, um, we have, we can add an activity factor to our basal metabolic rate. So, um, timesing this number, we have 1.2 would be if you're pretty sedentary job, you're not really going to the gym much, you know, and then 1.725 factor would be active job in the gym most days of the week. Okay, so we think, you know, for most of us, even if we do have a little bit of a sedentary job, because you're doing Biggest Loser, you gotta get your calorie burn, you are working out most days of the week. Um, and so an activity factor of about 1.55 would be reasonable for most individuals here. So again, you can kind of decide on the scale where you think you might be. Um, also talking to Brian or I, or um, your trainer too, to help you determine that as well. So if I take this person, and I'm just gonna say 1800 times 1.55, can anyone do that in their head? <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, so 2790 is gonna be this person's calories for maintenance. All right, so we wanna lose at least a pound a week. This individual could do that. If he wanted to lose, or she wanted to lose one pound a week, how many calorie deficit a day would they need to be at to reach one pound in a week? 500 calories. 
Good, you get a prize. I can do some math. Do you want a chopstick? Sure. Grass fed. Sure. Hey, these are on sale at Yolks right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so for every 500 calories less you're eating in a day, um, on average, you know, um, you're going to get that pound weight loss. So, again, this individual, not going below 1,800, does have the ability to lose around two pounds a week, which would be really solid. Again, getting their protein of at least 150 grams, okay, because of their lean muscle mass. And then their calories, like I said, they could drop down to that 1,800, all right? Does that kind of make sense as far as calculating that? So you're gonna take your basal metabolic rate times your activity factor, and then um, for every 500 calories less of that, that's one pound a week, but not going below this, all right? Yeah, so just to revisit this thing here, this 1.725 is like you have a very active job. You're in the gym a lot, right? So I agree with Christy where most of us are gonna be at the 1.55. And you'll see other ways to factor in how many calories you burn, but it's off of weight, like your weight times 11, your weight times 12, right? But again, it's not factoring in this BMR, so it's completely inaccurate, where this really gives you a more precise calorie burn. So I really like this this plan. And then Christy mentioned the protein, 150 grams a day. So if you look at your lean body mass, that's how that's where I start with protein grams for my macros. So I look at that, say, okay, that's gonna be my target for protein, is the lean mass I have. Some people it'll be like, hey, I've got 90, 90 pounds of lean mass. So my goal is gonna be 90 grams of protein for the day. And if I move beyond that, like if I move up to 120, 140, right? So that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be okay because protein is so metabolic, right? When you eat a steak or chicken, it takes a lot of energy just to process that food. Can, Can I comment on that too? So yeah, sure. and eating steak or chicken versus just slugging a protein drink is gonna be more metabolic as well. Your body has to break it down and work harder. So I don't know significantly how many more calories that is, but um, eating real food versus just supplementing shakes all day long is going to be take more energy, be more metabolic as well. Yeah, they've even talked about like one gram of protein is four calories uh, that you're consuming. They've even talked about lowering that down to like three point something because again it takes so much energy just to process it so it's very satiating takes a long time just to process again i agree don't just pound all the shakes get as much whole food as you can so it's it's satiating it's lasting longer you're not going to be hungry for it and then people will hear about like okay isn't there a limit to how much protein i can have at one time right for the kidneys sake you know i don't want to overload my kidneys and again if you're throwing down like two, three scoops of protein powder, that was just like a killer leg workout, I just need another scoop, another scoop, right? It's 60 grams of protein, right? That's when it's like, yeah, it's going right through you, and then your kidneys are gonna be like, what are you doing? You know, so if it's a lot of protein in a meal, it's hours of processing that, so it's not just this hit to your system. I do a protein shake post-workout, just to get it in there, but I'm not going like multiple scoops and then the rest is just whole food after that. So that's that's how you dictate your protein. If you're currently eating like 40 grams of protein a day, this is a journey, this is a process, right? If your goal is 150, you don't have to go 40 to 150 in one day. Just like, okay, I'm gonna add a little, a few more ounces of chicken to each, you know, each meal, add a few more grams of protein and work your way up, let your body adapt to it and then go from there. Right? So same thing with all of this stuff. It doesn't have to be this like, boom, tomorrow. Just as long as you're in process over this first month and then maybe like the halfway mark, like, all right, I'm getting all my macros in, my calories dialed in. All right, another question for a goodie, a healthy goodie. Um, how many, okay, I can't mess this up. How many grams of protein are typically in one ounce of meat? Yes. Uh, seven, seven, 
seven grams of protein and one ounce of meat. Uh, like if it's steak, it's more dense, you get a little more like around the seven. If it's like a lighter fish or something, it might go as low as five, but generally five to seven. So yeah, that's great. When you're calculating out, how do I get to this much protein, right? So like five ounces would be like 35 grams of protein. It would be, yeah. <laughs> if you're times it by seven, right? So you can just do some quick math there. It's like, all right, I got a 10 ounce steak. That's gonna be 70 grams of protein. That's pretty good. So for this individual, for instance, say, okay, you need 150 grams, you know, divide that by seven. So this is 21 ounces in a day. So just think like, you know, so just yeah, just for me, right? So. That's not, so seven, 14, like seven ounces of meat per like an eight ounce, six to eight, five to eight ounce portion, you know, and then your snacks and everything in there are probably gonna have some sort of protein in them as well. So you can kind of calculate that out and just kind of see, okay, well, how many ounces about is that? And am I gonna need to supplement in different areas? So. Yeah, and you have eggs and you have dairy and you have, plant proteins also as options, right? So it's not just all eating steak all day, chicken, fish, all that. So there is different options, so. Um, really quickly, visceral fat level, right? So that's where you wanna get into this better category here, right? Get that lower. Um, so just track that into your process too. Yep. Is that good? Yes, so, and this is also good, but we can, we just gotta make sure Okay, so now we're getting down to the, the nitty gritty here. So the macros, yeah, so the macronutrients, macros is just proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and then how many grams of those you wanna get to equal your total calorie intake that you're striving for. One quick note on that, when we talk about losing two pounds a week, that 1,000 calorie deficit getting down to your BMR, your basic metabolic rate, the lower you go, the more likely you are to lose muscle. If I'm at a 500 calorie deficit a day, my muscle is gonna be safer. If I'm at, right, if I, if I eat my normal calories, it's really safe, because my body's like, hey, we got plenty coming in, we don't need to go after the muscle and turn it into glucose for fuel, right? You drop down 1,000 calories, your body's gonna be going after that. So up the protein levels, definitely be striving for that goal. Yeah, so. Uh, carbohydrates, carbs are not bad, carbs are not bad, right? And so there is different kind of carbohydrates. There's complex carbohydrates, there's sugar, right? Table sugar, high fructose corn syrup. And on a health note, the fructose, the high fructose corn syrup, even table sugar, half of that, oh, something's going on there. <laughs> it's losing connection, but we're filming for YouTube oh, too, so yeah. yeah, you know. The people at home are continue, like, Brian. Continue. Awesome. Yeah. So this is where you can get really major health problems: heart attack, plaque buildup in the arteries, cirrhosis of the liver. It's from that <laughs> fructose goes into the liver and your body says like, hey, we work with glucose. So it stays in your liver, your body has to turn it into glucose before it can be used. And it, it'll fill up the glycogen, which is just stored sugar in your liver a little bit. And then you have, then it turns it into fatty acids. And then that fills up your liver, you get fatty liver, cirrhosis of the liver. And you're like, I didn't even drink any alcohol and I have cirrhosis of the liver, how'd that happen? And it's like, it's from the Twinkies and from Dairy Queen and the gummy bears and <laughs> all those yummy things. So yeah, you can kill yourself with sugar for sure. I'm sure most people have heard that. So that's the new bad guy is sugar. It's not the fat, it's the sugar. So definitely watch that when you're looking at a health standpoint. Uh, the small sticky cholesterol, the, the VLDL, that's gonna be produced by the sugar. Your liver produces that in response to high sugar. 
if you eat a lot of cholesterol, like I have 10 eggs a day, I have two steaks a day, right? My cholesterol level is just like through the roof. My blood cholesterol will be fine, right? So it goes in, it gets broken down. Your body uses it in different ways for testosterone, building blocks of the cells, all sorts of different stuff. Your brain has a lot of cholesterol in there. Like you need that. So what causes that bad LDL, the VLDL, the sticky stuff, is that sugar response, that specifically that fructose response. So be in mind of that, especially when we start talking about fats. So complex carbs, good healthy ones are gonna be like rice, quinoa, sweet potatoes, potatoes. That's just glucose, right? Fuel for your body. Now, if I eat too much, right, beyond what my body can use, and then I have storage in my muscles, it's called glycogen, so it fills up my muscles with, with stored sugar, not fat. When I go beyond that, it spills over into body fat. So you don't wanna to have too many carbs because you have that spillover, right? If I eat 200 grams of pasta when I wake up or just like massive bowl of oatmeal when I wake up, I'm gonna have that little spillover. So here's what I've noticed is if I have, if I'm leaner, if I'm